Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be going over frame rate myths. More specifically, that there are only four or five possible rates of fire in this game, and that your frame rate is going to determine how fast your guns are shooting, therefore making my stats and the game code relatively useless. There is actually a nugget of truth to this. Some of these myths are true, and some of them are not true, so we're going to go over all the different parts today in today's In Depth. And it may seem a little repetitive. We've covered some of this before in different episodes in MW3 and Black Ops 2, but this keeps coming up on Reddit, on forums, in my inbox quite a lot as a matter of fact, and I wanted to do an in-depth episode to dispel the misinformation about it. The gameplay that you're seeing in the background is me using the chainsaw. I put spectrum camo on it, I thought it'd look really cool, but most of the chainsaw doesn't have a spot for the camo pattern. I am playing Domination on Warhawk, and I get off to a very good start, but slump off a little bit later in the game. The two main myths that we're going to focus on today are as follows. Myth number one, your rate of fire is not constant and varies with frame rate. And frame rate is FPS if you're on computer games or how many frames per second you're getting on your consoles, and they do vary a bit. Myth number two is that there are only four possible rates of fire, sometimes listed as five or six possible depending on the person, but those are usually 1200, 900, 720, and 600. These are numbers to where if you've watched in depth, you've probably seen them very frequently. And uh, if they include more or less, they're almost all some multiple of 60. Myth number one is actually true. Your RPM or rounds per minute varies with the frame rate and is not constant. I'm going to give a short explanation of this, but if you would like a longer, much more detailed version, the number one link in the description is a Reddit post where a guy kind of like called me out. It was about a month old, but I gave the most detailed answer that I could possibly give with lots of links, lots of sources and citing and all that sort of stuff. So if you're really interested in the hard data, you can check out that link. But basically, the Call of Duty engine, it thinks in frame. If you think about our physical universe, we have some base units or base, uh, we'll say, uh, measurements. Uh, we'll call them length or time. Uh, velocity and speed aren't really those things. Mass is another pretty good base unit. And we gave, we gave arbitrary numbers to them, but when you're building a game engine that has physics, you need to do a similar kind of thing. You need to define some sort of base units or base lengths or something like that. And for the Call of Duty engine, they chose to make the base unit, the one of the more important units, frame rate. So your uh, frames per second on a computer is the base unit in a Call of Duty game. Any Call of Duty game, even if you're not running it on a computer, your console is essentially a computer that's been stripped back and designed just to do gaming, and whatever frame rate your console has, that is going to be the base unit in the Call of Duty physical universe that it's creating. So, when you do weird things to your frame rate and your frame rate changes, you're changing the physical properties of that little created universe because they're moving up and down and doing different things. So, if you vary your frame rate, your rate of fire can change, and it won't be constant. It can change instantaneously a couple times a second. It'll also change how fast you run, how high you jump. Uh, I don't know if it'll do lengths, but it will change your bandwidth. High and low frame rates can also do very interesting things to bandwidth because Call of Duty has to send info and packets and latency and the packets have to line up with frames per second. It gets a little bit complicated, but changing frame rate will change everything about the game. Again, if you'd like more information, I would highly recommend that you check out the Reddit post. But because of this, you will never get the stated or coded rate of fire. The, what I tell you, like this gun shoots at 835 RPM, because of the way frame rate works, you will never get to that exact 835 RPM. It just doesn't do that way because of math and because of rounding and because how the engine is designed to handle half numbers and fractions and repeating decimals and stuff. You won't actually be shooting that fast. And because of that, the myth has come about that you can only shoot at these three or four rates of fire, and thank goodness myth number two is not true at all. There are many different possible rates of fire and combinations of rates of fire in Call of Duty Ghost. Uh, if you're curious about this, this is the formula for your exact or real rate of fire. Your formula for real rate of fire, we have to make a function called roundup. Now, I personally did not derive this. A, an, an individual much smarter than myself on the Den Kearson forums did this, and if you go to the Reddit post, I link to his uh, research. But this function called roundup, it just means round up to the nearest whole number because we're doing we're working with frames here and if the engine has to think in whole frames there's no such thing as a half frame a quarter frame uh, any sort of fraction of a frame it doesn't work so we round up to a whole number and, the, and then you can use that formula right there and that's how it interacts with your coded rate of fire uh, what it's supposed to be doing uh, your frame rate and a lot of different other sort of things it does it looks like gobbledygook right there but the end result is 
that it has a tendency to round your rate of fire down unless you're running at exactly 240 FPS, 120 FPS, 60 FPS, some sort of very good multiple of 60. There's going to be a lot of rounding and inconsistencies between your rate of fire and the actual game engine coded FPS. So it has a tendency to round down somewhere between at the most extreme I've seen it go about 15% lower than the stated rate of fire but usually it hangs around 5 to 10% and some people would say does this make your, my gun stats useless like have I been lying to you guys have I been telling you things that aren't true like I say that the Vepper shoots at 780 RPM well because of this rounding effect it's actually going to shoot at 710 RPM or something like that as it logically follows, the next question is, does that make your gun stats useless? Does that make what I do, what Xbox Ahoy does, what T. Martin does, what Ali A does, what all the commentators do, what all the stat charts online you've seen, does that actually make those useless? Are we lying to you? Are we telling you things that aren't true about the guns? And no, they're still very good comparative stats. Just because I say, okay, the Vepper shoots at eight, 780 RPM, and because of this rounding effect on your console, on your instantaneous situation, it rounds down to 750 RPM or 710, it does this within a logical pattern. There is a tolerance there, a 5 to 10 percent margin, and every gun is going to do the same thing. So the stats that I give you and that other commentators give you are still very good comparative stats, and they work very well for what we're trying to do. And I really wouldn't split hairs because visually, when you're shooting, you won't notice the difference between 750 RPM and 780 RPM. Uh, we just can't perceive things that are that fast as human beings. I mean, or it's definitely not in a gunfight. It's not going to make a difference because your opponent's going to be playing on a similar system and it'll be doing about the same thing. Except, of course, if you play on a PC. If you play on a PC, you can get wildly different results because you can change your FPS a lot. And I'm aware that Call of Duty Ghost has some FPS capping and some issues, but if you play on PC, I would recommend that you try to lock your FPS at some kind of multiple of 60 if possible. I previously would have recommended 120 or you know 240 or something like that, but as I've been told, uh, Call of Duty has a FPS lock, so you may just need to lock it at 60. But keeping your FPS on multiples of 60 or doing the math and finding your gun and your formula and where it benefits you is going to be best on PC. And I think actually linked to uh, a good place to calculate that in the Reddit post if you want to check that out. So that's my advice to PC players. It can make a big difference. Console players, it's not going to make a big difference. And don't worry about it if somebody tells you, oh, you need to put your console in 720p and you'll get more FPS. Not true. Put your console in standard definition, you'll get more FPS. Not true. Turn this up to option off and turn that option off and you'll change your rate of fire on the guns. Absolutely not true. It's all hogwash. Don't listen to it. Just play normally and uh, don't worry about this too much unless you're playing on your PC. Well guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out my previous episode on SVU, you can click the box on the left. And if you'd like to check out my next episode, which I'm going to keep secret for now, you can click on the box on the right. As always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe, and check out my sponsor Elgato down in the description. Drifter out.